Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And welcome to another installment of Old vs. New. <laughs> Tim Burton. Every time you see a movie by him, you know it's always going to be dark, strange, and goofy. That is, except when he reimagines stuff. We all know what a powerhouse remake Planet of the Apes was, so I wasn't very enthusiastic when he was remaking one of my childhood favorites, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. When I saw the trailer for this movie, I really thought it was going to blow. You can't top the original. No way, no how. But, much to my surprise, I was totally right. Not that it was the worst film, but I just don't think it held a candle to the original. But is this just the thoughts of a stubborn curmudgeon, or is there really something there that I'm missing? Well, let's take a look back. This is Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory versus Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Mm -hmm. So let's get down to the main star himself. That is the main star for Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory because his name's in the title. Even though that movie was more about Charlie, and that Charlie in the Chocolate Factory was ironically more about Willy Wonka, sort of a marketing mistake in my opinion. They should have thought a little harder, I forget. <laughs> These are two of my favorite actors, Gene Wilder and Johnny Depp. Every time you see them, they're a ton of fun to watch, playing a ton of different characters, ranging from kind and innocent to psychotic and... more psychotic. But which one is the best Wonka? Well, let's take a look at Wilder. He has the ideas and ambition of a child, yet the mind and demeanor of a James Bond villain. Every time you see him, you feel welcome, but also a little disturbed. When you look at him, you have no idea what he's thinking. You just know that he already has everything planned out. Two naughty, nasty little children gone. Three good, sweet little children left. You can tell he has patience, but only for the people and ideas that deserve it. Everything else turns into a blueberry. So, yeah, he's pretty demented. But he was also suave, elegant, mysterious, and when he needed to be, very kind. This gave him an edge, and allowed both children and adults to identify him and join him for the ride. Johnny Depp, on the other hand... You smell like... old people. Hurt me. Now don't get me wrong, I love Johnny Depp, and I'm all for reinventing what the Willy Wonka character is like, but I have no idea what he's doing here. I always thought a Veruca was a type of wart you got on the bottom of your foot. Ha! <laughs> I guess the idea is that he's a lost child in a grown man's body due to his past, but... Nothing about him is consistent. He sends out golden tickets to find the right child to take over his factory, but when they arrive, he seems totally uninterested in them. Mr. Wonka, I'm Violet Beauregard. I don't care. Don't you want to know all our names? Can't imagine how it would matter. Maybe because they'll be running your The Gene Wilder Wonka was fun to be around, always cracking jokes while having a diabolical edge to him. This Wonka just annoys the out of me. Where is fancy bread? In the heart or in the head? The best kind of prize is a surprise. <laughs> it's sort of like watching a friend act really bad in a play, but you're in such a world of awkwardness that you can't tell him. Who wants a beard? Well, beatniks for one. All those hip, jazzy, super cool, neat, keen, and groovy cats. It's in the fridge, Daddy-o. Are you hep to the job? Can you dig what I'm laying down? I knew that you could slide me some skin. So, brother? Yeah, yeah that was good. That, 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 that was good. Plus, why does he look like a mix between Marilyn Manson and that Russian chick from Indiana Jones 4? We are the music makers. And we are the dreamers of dreams. <laughs> You're really weird. Johnny, I love you, but everybody has to have at least one bad performance, and unfortunately, this is yours. Point goes to the Wonka version. That's weird. <laughs> Oompa, doompa, doompa dee dee. If you are wise, you'll listen to me. But what about the supporting cast? Which one is truly more scrum dilly cup scrum di scrum pep scrum dilly cup scrum scrum dilly cup? 
In the Wonka version, all the kids are great actors and reflect the bratty stereotypes of the time. In the Charlie version, they pretty much got that down too. In fact, they updated. Mike TV is more obsessed with video games than he is with television, and his parents are a lot more careless, like the kind of hapless people who wouldn't mind letting technology raise their child. DIE! 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 I also like the update with Violet, as they make her a winning obsessed champion, and not just a gum enthusiast. The mother is updated too, reflecting kind of a perfect soccer mom who pushes her daughter's victories to the nth degree. That's a little bit more of a modern problem than a girl who just chews a lot. How about Grandpa Joe? Both are different, but both seem to be supportive and strong. Especially when it comes to prancing out of their bedridden sheets, fingers. Has I think I like the Wonka Grandpa Joe a little better because he was a tad more stubborn, which made him all the more supportive. But did they really have to make him sing? I never dreamed that I would climb over the moon in ecstasy. Good morning! Look at the sun! Shut up! How about the Oompa Loompas? Well, I gotta say I like the Wonka version again. Why? Well, how do I put this? Even though Deep Roy is a really enjoyable actor and he has a big task playing every single Oompa Loompa, just erase from your mind for a moment that you've ever heard of an Oompa Loompa yet. No idea what it is. Which one of these would be an Oompa Loompa? Is this an Oompa Loompa? No, that's just a little person made even smaller. That's a Oompa Loompa. Orange face, green hair, weird as No contest. But for me, the big deciding point is Charlie himself. And I'm just gonna come out and say it, I hate this brat. I'm sure he's a nice kid and he's acted well in other movies, but he is a friggin' saint in this picture, does everything right, never thinks of himself. He's a boy scout. We need the money more than we need the chocolate. Candy doesn't have to have a point. I wouldn't give up my family for anything. Usually they're just trying to protect you because they love you. What makes you feel better when you feel terrible? My family. <sighs> The old Charlie was a lot more realistic. He was a nice kid, but he was still a kid. He would get sad, he would get angry, and there's even moments where he would get greedy. I want it more than any of them. In case you're wondering if it'll be me, it won't be. Just in case you're wondering, you can count me out. We don't look down at him for it, we just know it's all part of being a little boy. This kid could try out for Jesus. We'll share it. Oh no, Charlie. Not your birthday present. It's my candy bar, and I'll do what I want with it. Do this in memory of me. Also, his performance is pretty bland, but what do you expect when you pretty much have no juicy material to deal with? Sure, of course. Can you remember the first candy you ever ate? The gates are always closed. Aren't I just charming? Ha ha! See how Charlie is one of the main characters as well as the focus of the story? <laughs> well, it should be. I think it's only fair to give credit where credit's due. Point goes to the Wonka version. Mumbler! Seriously. I cannot understand a single word you're saying. Oompa, oompa, doompa dee dee. If you are wise, you'll listen to me. But you can't have a musical adventure without music. Otherwise, you just have an adventure. Which would still be pretty amazing. In fact, maybe even more amazing because you want to have all that music around annoying you. I, I, I need something to off awkward this. Thank you! This is best music! Now the songs from Willy Wonka are known by pretty much everyone. They're catchy, they're timeless, they're household tunes. The candy man can cheer up Charlie. I've got a golden ticket! So who do you get to try and match songs like those? Well, the guy who did the music for Nightmare Before Christmas is pretty good. Composer Danny Elfman has practically done all of Tim Burton's movies, so he was pretty lucky that he also happened to be a songwriter. But how can you compete with songs that everybody knows and loves? Well, their solution was actually pretty clever. The songs don't appear until they enter the factory, and are only sung by the Oompa Loompas. But with every song they sing, they try a new decade of music. They start off with a 50s mambo, a 60s disco, a 70s hippie song, and an 80s rock homage. Now that's a really clever idea. The only downside is that the songs, while entertaining, are pretty short and to be honest, not very memorable. That is, except for... This song tormented so many people months after they saw this flag. 
It's so catchy, you'll bleed your brains out of your ears. There's so much generosity, there's no way to contain it. How does the rest of the music fare out? Well, they both seem to match the tone they're trying to set. Wonka's is a bit more whimsical and smooth. Where Charlie's is a bit more quirky and deranged. But if I had to choose, I really do have to go with the original Wonka version. No disrespect to Elfman, but these are just classic, memorable, perfect songs. I wouldn't expect anybody to top them. Again, point goes to Wonka. Once again, you really shouldn't mumble because it's kind of starting to bum me out. Oompa, oompa, -dee -dee. If you are wise, you'll listen to me. But if there's anything you think Tim Burton would be able to outdo, it's the visual style. I mean, this is the guy who said, hey, you know what that guy needs? Scissors on his hands. That'll make the movie work. But is it enough to save this reimagining? Let's take a look at visual style. This one really is like apples and oranges because they both have very distinct looks. The look of the Wonka movie has sort of a timeless feel, almost like it could take place anywhere. But to be fair, the Charlie version does too. Burton really knows how to take our modern day world and make it look like something out of a fairy tale. The cinematography and sets are just so exaggerated they're absolutely perfect. But in a sense, that's also a problem with the film. The first half is so cleverly set up and visually clever that it actually kind of loses its edge when it goes inside the factory. There's a few too many things going on, it's a little too dark to make everything out. In Wonka's version, you could see everything fine, and the strangeness was a great contrast to the typical everyday world we saw in the first half. But the Wonka version has problems, too. The film does have sort of a 70s tint to the whole thing, and on top of that, the effects were good at the time, but are now a tad outdated. That chocolate river looks more like liquid feces. It always looked like colored water, and it still does. It's polluted. It's chocolate. No, it's not. The Charlie version looked a lot more like chocolate. I mean, it really looks like you can eat that stuff. That and they did actually get the proper design of what a gobstopper looks like. I mean, what the f are those? Can't you see? It makes everlasting gobstoppers. No, that's a radioactive paperweight. I'm not sure what you smoke to see gobstopper. In the Charlie version, the factory never did look quite right, but at least it did look more like a factory, particularly in the opening credits. A close call, but I am gonna go with the Charlie version. They just had more money, more time, and a visionary nutball to make it all look good. Point goes to the Charlie version. He's absolutely bonkers! <laughs> but again, it all comes down to story. Which one tells their tale the best? Well, let's not wait any longer and dive right in. While both versions seriously deviate from the book, I give credit that they both create their own vision of what they're trying to say. As I said before, the Wonka version is more focused on the Charlie character, and the Charlie movie is ironically more focused on the Wonka character. Isn't that strange? And I have to be honest, I went into the Charlie version expecting to hate it. But when it started, I didn't find it that bad. It seemed creative and felt like it was trying to start its own unique version that actually kind of worked. That is, again, until Depp showed up. <laughs> But then again, the Charlie version is almost banking on the fact that you saw the other version. The scene where Grandpa Joe walks is almost glanced over, and like I said before, Charlie is so underdeveloped you could pretty much just run the movie without it. He's pretty much a footnote next to Wonka. The film also shows a lot more, like I never really wanted to see Loompa Land. I had my own vision of what a vernicious canid looked like, and it did not look like that thing. <laughs> In fact, I still had my kindergarten drawing of what I thought one originally looked like. I had issues. It also bothered me how we don't know if the kids survived in the Wonka version, yet we clearly see them survive in the Charlie version. I think the message sticks much more to kids when you don't know if they survived, but there's still that possible out that they did. There's also no Slugworth, but that wasn't really in the book anyway. And there's also no outburst at the end, which seemed to really put Charlie's innocence and kindness to the test. Now granted though, the Charlie version did update a lot of plot holes. Like why shrink down a giant piece of chocolate that could make like 50 bars into one? 
In this version, they actually say they want to teleport through television, which is a lot more clever. They also explain that Wonka is looking for children to win the golden tickets, not adults. I mean, how did he know in the other version that coincidentally five children and not five adults would find the tickets? I'm a trifle deaf in this ear. Speak a little louder next time. But what really gets me are the morals. That's probably the weirdest part. The moral of the Wonka version is just always be good and true to yourself and one day you'll get your reward. Simple enough. The moral of the Charlie version, I guess, is to always be a kid at heart but be an adult in your mind. Don't spend your adult life being a little child. But that's more of a message for grown-ups, isn't it? You know, and unsuccessful comedians. But like I said before, the number one problem with the Charlie version is that it was about Wonka. And it shouldn't be. Charlie is the focus and the character kids can identify with. Wonka is more like Merlin or Mr. Miyagi. He's interesting, but he's not the heart of the story. That has to belong to the main character, which is Charlie. His name is in the title of the book for crying out loud! Though I don't hate it as much as I did in the past, it's clear which one's the superior version. The Wonka version. Uh, it's Wonka version. The old, the original, the timeless classic. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> no way. Oompa, oompa, doompa dee dee. If you are wise, you'll listen to me. So the old wins this time around. As a special treat, here's the original music from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory to play us out. Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka, no. give me no. some chocolate. No! no. Play something else! <laughs> Enough is enough. This is the final! This is the very, very last straw! Who is responsible for this? This... I demand that you show yourself! Who are you? Huh? <laughs> Ain't I a stinker?